If you've ever experienced the transcendent, I'd say some of the best that you can do with the experience is to not talk about it. The transcendent is something that words can't explain. It's a feeling of humility that you are in fact so small and so almost irrelevant in the grand scope of, of the entire process of life. But somehow in some mysterious way, at least in my experience, the transcendent is a space in which you are so loved and accepted and your life is purposeful and your existence is meaningful. That's why I make the art that I make. My name is David Popa. I'm an artist who uses natural materials, earth pigments such as chalk, charcoal, ochres, essentially colors that come directly from the earth. It's the same materials that early cave painters would have used. And I basically place these pigments in really household garden sprayers. And I make large scale works of art that can only be seen from the eye of a drone, which is very similar to some of the most ancient works of art called geoglyphs, these huge works that can only be seen from above that was created thousands of years ago. The mystery is why on earth did they make them? They didn't have drones or helicopters. And and so I'm sort of entering into a mysterious realm of what it means to, to exist here on Earth, to be human in this miraculous, beautiful world, and to reach for something beyond that which you know. I just had been dreaming of coming to a sort of desert landscape. And I had no idea that specifically Utah, but around the area of Hanksville was just an otherworldly sort of planetary location. It was really quite hard to figure out what it is that I was gonna create. So one morning I just went off alone seeing so viscerally the exposure of these landscapes to time. And it just seems like an incredible cycle, the cycle of life unfolding right before you, etched in the geography of these mounds and the landscapes. And I went on the top of these cliffs here. 
I started to look at the, the textures and shapes, which just reminded me of a womb. What I'm really after with my work is to experience that extra mystery, that extra transcendence. What would it be to, I guess, go deep within where I'm at right now personally? I'm gonna be having my third child in a month. It was like the landscape was telling me, you have to create the birth of your third child. This idea started to, uh, uh, you know, I guess knock at my door. It was like, let's present the cycle of, of life. I got really emotional. It was clear that I was gonna be creating my child, at least as she exists inside the womb of, of, of my wife. very first location was this mound that was really quite decently high. I mean, you de definitely break a leg if you're falling off of that. And it was an uncomfortable place to be, but I'm used to discomfort. And so we're so excited and, you know, I've been doing this a few years and it doesn't mean Jack because we arrive on spot and I had the sprayers pull them out and um, every single one of these sprayers clogged. I could not believe that I could barely get a spray off. And I honestly thought that that was it. Like it was day one and it's already a total catastrophe. I mean, I literally tested these things out. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to talk about it. On the trip is also I, uh, I haven't seen my sister in a long time, so she, she's also here along the trip and she wanted to, I wanted to introduce her to, to the process of making this work and so she brought sprayers. Mine are all clogged, mine are completely clogged. And I ended up basically stealing her sprayers. She was kind enough to let me use them and, and they worked perfectly. If it stays like that, that's the way a sprayer's supposed to work. All of a sudden, the tie completely shifted and that made me change the location that I was making my work on. So I switched from that high mound to another location, which was unbelievable. It looked as if there were sort of veins and arteries and it almost feels like the birthplace of creation. It's as if the landscape was dictating where I would make a work. It was already like four o'clock where I had to get started and do this new piece. If I'm gonna make a cycle of life and I wanna make potentially four pieces, I have to make a piece every single day. There's no room for error. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, this is all, this is final everything. This is it. I'm gonna take the drone up as high as I can. See the whole and so within three and a half, four hours, ended up pulling off this piece. It always feels like magic. give birth to something is painful. But it's, it's amazing how like immediately when the child is delivered, the pain just resides and it's just this incredible moment. Thin spaces or thin moments, it's, it's the idea that heaven and earth comes close to each other and we could almost we could almost sense the divine and you could feel that when a child is born and you could also feel that when you give something your all in a creative endeavor and it comes to life and it's it's beautiful Next day, I mean, I have no idea what I'm gonna paint the next day. And we decided to head off again and really trying to like wrestle and grapple with like what, what happens during life? What, what is it in life that makes, that makes for the human experience? And so I start reflecting on like, what are some of the most beautiful events that have happened in, in my life? And that's mysteriously, usually after events of some form of suffering. There's never been a single time in the art form that I'm using where it hasn't been absolutely like a level of suffering. And whether that's a mental one where you just have so much doubt as to whether I'm gonna pull it off, very bizarre to reflect and think on. I mean, we would think that pleasure and happiness and joy comes all from perfect state of bliss where everything around you is, is beautiful. There's no struggle. But the reality is that something within us, the spirit within us comes alive after we have pushed through a storm, hiked up a mountain, after we have experienced some level of heartache. And so I, I endeavor to create suffering. And the best way I could do that is is to actually use uh, one of the sculptures as a reference of the famous French sculptor, Cordin. His great-great-grandson was one of the mentors of my father. As a child, he would tell me, that, don't forget, Dave, the, the advice and the things I tell you is not just coming from me, but it's coming from my mentor, who is a descendant of this great sculptor. And this sculptor did the gates of hell. Like that was what, that was his most, one of his most famous pieces where he did the gates of hell. I mean, he literally depicted suffering. It's, it, it, it feels like we're at the birthplace of, 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 of all of creation. This location was just, oh man. It was so eerie and so ethereal. It's like this enlarged skull to represent this huge level of, of intensity with again, these sort of streams and striations coming into that form to create this portrait almost etched inside the stone, like as if I chiseled out and etched out this suffering figure. Oh 
man, it was, it was of course just like every single piece, very, very difficult. There's so many doubts to whether or not I'm gonna pull this piece off. We got an hour. We might have to do an immense amount of work. It might all be way too late, so let's see. Right facial expression, it's, a, it's sort of a not an easy subject matter to undertake. It could easily look wrong. I don't know. I don't know. One, two. Come on, Dave. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. When I flew the drone up for the very first time, I actually hadn't flown up at all. Yeah, I barely had to touch up anything and we were able to just nail that that piece. I think we already hit it. I think we already freaking hit it. Come on! Come on, baby. That was a push. Come on. Put a little bit more eye and that's it. sort of reflecting on suffering and reflecting on friends and family who had suffered a lot and, and then the mystery of why some of the most beautiful aspects of life come from that pain. There's a lot there. I attempted to create this piece like three weeks ago. And I've never happened, it's never happened before where I just had to uh, abandon the whole thing. It was meant for this, this spot right here. experience the transcendent. I'd say some of the best that you can do with the experience is to not talk about it. And so day, 
day three, moving into day three, it was, um, I mean, you painting the birth of your child, then you're painting a level of sort of suffering that, that is, seems to be like a necessary part of the human experience to really feel, feel the best parts of, of life. So like, what do you do after that? I had no idea. And I had, again, scouted a location, at least on Google Maps. We hiked up all the way to this spot and um, the wind gusts were, it was absolutely insane. I had never been in, I mean, we were in a desert storm. I don't know. I think it would have just taken the drone away. And so there was a lot, a lot to think about. Like we're at, uh, can we even, can we even pull off the piece? Like got to make another piece today. And um, I also have no idea what I'm going to make. And so just trying to feel out what is a, what does the landscape want? What is it with this, this wind? And I thought we were going to go to a whole other completely new location. And then we end up kind of wandering back to the same path that we were on. And I said, just had this weird intuitive feeling like fly the drone, Dave. Just it's windy, but it's a little bit, a little bit less windy down, down in this valley. Fly the drone up. And when I flew it up, it was, it was so bizarre. I mean, it was, I'm missing my wife, of course, but the colors were all of her favorite colors. These muted pastels, these sort of pinks and beiges. It was as if she was like trying to speak to me through the landscape, through the wind. And at that point, I knew I was gonna, I had to create a piece of my wife. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't be creating the work I'm creating today. She's a mysterious part of my destiny. The wind actually just gave me even a greater sense of I don't know, confidence. It was just, it was, it was so strong, but it, it was like the breath of life. And I started working on it. I just felt so happy about it. reflecting on her and the birth of the child. It, it just felt like the mystery and the presence of, of, of love that I have for, for my wife and, and for the whole creative endeavor and being out here. And so it all sort of tied so beautifully. flew the drone up and I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with my proportions. I, I just don't know if there was a problem when I initially flew the drone up to get the sizing right. But I, I, I never, I never messed up that badly before. Something happened. I don't know what happened with the, it just, it looks so bad right now. The nose and the lips were in a completely wrong direction. And I felt like there was no coming back from this. And you would also think that if it's your wife, like it's gonna be easy, you know her so well, you're gonna be able to pull it off. But it felt like a nightmare scenario where like this is absolutely what needed to be created and it's coming out so bad. What happened? I just got the 
proportion is wrong. I had to go back with the light and just dig as far deep into my fears, because there's all these fears are present. It feels like there's a lot in the line. You're like trying to make a, a, this cycle. You're trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to make, we're trying to film everything. I, I mean, everything is coming together. And then like, bro, you can't even like do a piece of your wife. I, I couldn't believe it was happening. I made such major mistakes on the proportions on this. I can't believe. I come all this way for nothing. We need to take this back. We need to take this back. Come on. Just fill up the whole thing. Write up the whole thing. I'll talk to myself very often, and that's actually like what I'll do is I'll, well, I'll talk to myself in third person, which is actually like the voice of my father. The right side's not that bad, it's the left side. My father is, of course, you know, is a mentor of mine, but furthermore, I think taught me how to be, how to be a man, how to, how to push to the very end. Give me everything you've got, Dave. Even though you're really afraid and the whole thing feels like it's crumbling down on top of you. And so to just be that voice of being like, Dave, s stop being afraid. Embrace what you have, embrace your mistakes and get after this thing. I don't know if this has gone too far. It's too far over. Nostril. It's too far over, so what do you do? Sit tight with me. Just sit tight with me. Just sit tight with me. I think we might have gotten it, boys. Oh my gosh. Thank God. Although I'm not fully, fully satisfied as probably any artist is with the final completion of his work. I think I end up capturing my wife in a, in a unique and a special way.
yeah, and I guess couldn't believe that uh, we were able to have day three and be able to create yet another work in a desert sandstorm. I mean, it's just, just incredible experience. And I think the main theme and being inside of, in that moment, where I didn't think I could pull it off and the wind is sweeping over and it's so strong. And then you look out the beauty of the nature and then to feel what it feels like after to have accomplished it. It's just like almost impossible to comprehend where you are in the physical space. You feel like you're on another plane in this sort of transcendent realm when all your senses are, are altered and you're in this new space. And it humbles you, right? You're like, how did I get here? I, I don't, I didn't even, I didn't orchestrate this. Like, how am I even an artist? What is it that I'm even doing? The mysterious part of it is it feels like at some point it's not even you there. Someone else is there. And I think anyone who's really entered into their most powerful creative potential, they would tell you that's not them completely there. Something else passes through them in order to make what they're destined to make. And I guess that's a big part why I, what I live for and why I make the work that I make is to feel something that's not myself. To sort of bask in that mystery. Come on, Dave. Come on. And so right now, as we speak, we're about to uh, embark on our, the final, the final piece, which well, the inevitable. But is there beauty to be found in the end? It is the end, in fact a new beginning. It's like we just entered the, the valley of death here. But it's so beautiful. I could have never imagined some, something like this exists. But it's definitely, definitely echoes the work we're trying to make.
shadow coming over the valley. The valley of the shadow of death. Look. doesn't feel that.